mustard seed. If you have, but this this is, this is something God showed me. Say this is the kind of faith I desire my people to have. And I'm like, what kind of faith is this? We want to talk about today. This will be lesson number one. I'm not gonna finish, but I want to give you a, this is the introduction <coughs> of Abrahamic faith. I want all of us and believers all over the world to have that Abrahamic, yes, Abrahamic type of faith. Remember, he was the he was the father of all nations for those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. This man's faith was super genuine. I just can't say genuine, but super genuine. And if you have this kind of faith, you can walk and do a lot of work for God. You can walk with God a long time. Amen. Any type of faith that you possess is good. All faith is good. Because without faith, it is impossible to even please God. But Abraham is my example today because he is the originator of faith. And God said it. All the nations of the world are going to be blessed, Abraham, because of what you've done. His name used to be Abram, which means highly exalted father. But God said, I want you to be the father of many nations. So he changed his name to Abraham. Abrahamic faith is what I'm talking about this morning. And this kind of faith here, and I believe I got Abrahamic faith. Not 100 percent though. I would say 85 percent. Because when God called me to preach, I ran four years. Abraham ain't do that. When God told him to do something, he did it. He didn't hesitate. I wonder what type of faith you got. We're gonna describe a few more people besides Abraham. And if you got Gideon type of faith or Moses type of faith, I want you to dislodge that and get Abraham type of faith. I'm somebody might be saying, what is I this just look to your neighbor and say, this just an introduction? Just what is Gideon type of faith? God told Gideon, I want you to go to war for me and drive out the Midianites. Gideon said, I'll do it, but show me a sign first. I'll do it, Lord. Please don't be angry with me. I'm going to put this blanket on the ground. And in the morning, I want, if you want me to go out and defeat the Midianites and you're going to be with me, wear just, now how you going to wear just the blanket and let the ground be dry? Now, if you do that, I'll, I'll go out and fight for you. The next morning, the Bible said, get in rain the fleece and it was a bowl full of water. He still didn't do it. He said, Lord, pardon me. If you really want me to go out and do this, and this you talking to me, let the ground be wet and let the blanket be dry. And God did it. And then he obeyed God. See that? See that? That's how some of us. Well, Lord, if you give me a, if you if you let me get this, if you let me get this new, or whatever it is you're trying to get, we ain't just too many things to name. I'm going to do this, and God do it, and we don't do it. <coughs> And then we say, well, Lord, I know what I said, but I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm still going through and I'm trying. No, that's, see, that's Gideon. Now Moses, he got faith too. But Moses made excuses. God said, go tell Pharaoh and let my people go. Moses said, who am I that I should go tell Pharaoh and let your people go? I'm from Field Wall. <laughs> he made excuses. If God called you, you go do it. Who am I? I'm divorced. I'm married. I'm single. I'm pregnant. I'm in school. I just got promoted. Who am I? See, you might have that Moses kind of faith. He said, go Moses. I'm going to be with you. He said, well, who am I going to tell him something? All these questions just don't make up. Tell him I am that I am Moses, but go. Then Moses said, but I can't talk right. <laughs> See? You see what I'm talking about? What kind of faith you got today? What's your excuse for not releasing your whole body to God? Your whole soul to God? Your whole time to God? Your whole wallet to God? Your whole talent to God? Your whole gifts to God? Maybe you like Moses. Who am I? Don't put me on program. I just joined. Who am I? 
I got bills to pay. I can't give an offering. Who am I? I can't help clean up the church. I work all the time. Who am I? You tell me, I don't know. That's why I see God smarter than us. I want you to be like Abraham. Because when I told Abraham to go to the land, I will show him. He just went. Oh right. Lord. Right. And the Bible says, not knowing where he was going, he obeyed. Right. When you get that kind of faith, you're going to be dangerous to the kingdom. Well, I would invite him, but they ain't going to come. So, you're the only Jesus they're going to ever see. Hmm? You think I don't invite people? They still, I be invite people. That's my job. You got to get to Jesus, baby. Any way you can. I still got to do it. Watch this. Abrahamic faith. This is what the Lord gave me. I'm like, I can't go to wealth. Look at that thing. He can't go to wealth. When we fight the devil. The devil ain't winning wealth. I got to go to God. The Holy Spirit said, this is Abraham faith. Abrahamic type of faith. This is the most genuine type of faith one could possess because it is pure and sincere. It is the type of faith that tells God, I'm going to do this simply because you asked me to do it and I trust you. Woo, that's some good stuff there. Yeah. Let me say that again. Abrahamic faith is the most genuine type of faith one could possess. Because it is pure and sincere. It is the type of faith that tells God, I'm going to do this simply because you asked me to do it and because I trust you. I call that childlike faith. You can tell your child, get in that lion's den, that baby going to do it. Baby don't know that lion to kill it. But daddy say, get in there. Mama say, get in there. Childlike faith. See, wisdom ain't too good when we think we know too much. But faith is good when you just trust God. It don't, if, 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 if you can see what he finna do, it's not faith. That's confident. Faith leads you to areas where you blind and unknown areas. Where you got to rely on God to lead you. And ever since I answered my call, I said, I got to do whatever you tell me. I don't care how crazy it is. The more crazy it is, that's how you know when it's God. When it makes sense, it ain't God. Somebody said, well, that don't make sense. Well, you got to learn your Bible. He said, my ways are not your ways. Neither your thoughts, my thoughts. Just as high as the heavens are from the earth, so are my thoughts than your thoughts. My ways and your ways. He told Hosea the preacher to marry a prostitute. Now, what the reverend need with a prostitute? <laughs> that ain't good for the church. The first lady going to be a whore. God say, Jose, I want you to marry this woman because she's going to hurt your feelings just like y'all keep hurting my feelings and I want you to see how it feels to be hurt by people you love so when you preach this message, it's going to have power. That's right. That's right. He said, she's going to run after her lovers. I'm going to tell you what kind of women. And she's going to run after her lovers. You got to go buy and pay money and get her back and bring her back home and she's going to leave you again. But you marry her. And Hosea did it. He didn't say, God, come on now. Everybody gonna say my mama ain't gonna want her to come around the house. The family, she gonna be messing with the brother. You marry her. Mm -hmm. See, everybody want church going, woman. Church going, man. What do God want? God might want you to marry the biggest dope dealer in town and get him converted because he's gonna be my preacher. Or he may marry you, won't you? He might call you to marry somebody that's not faithful. I don't know. But he did it. And see, you can't trust God like that and then doubt him at the same time. Uh, Hosea did it. And he was hurt too. God said, I want you to feel my pain. I bless Israel. And every time I bless them, they turn their back and serve other gods. Just like 2016, that would be bad. That's why they ain't here. They serving other gods. God then gave them stuff and the stuff became their gods. If they ain't had nowhere to live and sleep in their car, they'd be with you this morning. Huh? God told Abraham, I want you to leave your place of comfort, Abraham. I want you to leave all your kinfolks behind and go to the family, to the land that I will show you. 
And the Bible said when God spoke to Abraham, he was 75 years old. And Abraham obeyed God. Now, he, first thing he did, he said, if I'm going to bless you, I got to get you away from your family. Ain't that something? Isn't that something? You know how we got to look at that one. Come on now. You're not going to abandon your family, but I don't need nobody intervening with you when I get this blessing going through you. But you know what people do. If it don't make sense to them, they'll be telling you all not do that. I done had it happen. Not in, not with the church, but I'm talking about just in life. Why you gonna do that? Ain't nobody gonna do that. And why you gonna do that? And, and you know what I mean? You don't need to tell them that God told you to do it. Don't even throw that because they can't handle that. They're gonna think you're crazy when you say God told me to do this. But he said, Abraham, get away, get away from your kindred, your place of comfort. Not that his family wasn't, he loved his family. You know that he's a God fearing man. That's why God finna do that work in him. That's why he wanna do some work through you. That's why he got you separated from everybody so he can show up in your life. But you got to let him have his way with you. You think he isolates you for nothing? When God isolated Jesus from his disciples, he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. It was for ministry. He ain't going to let you do what everybody else is doing. He's going to keep you separated because he needs somebody to represent him. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 12. Look at verse 1 through 4. When you finally say, bless his name. Bless his name. Just want to show you. I'm not gonna, we're not going to finish that. Just the introduction. Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1 through 4. Let's look at that. It says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, his name Abram at this time, because he hadn't fulfilled the promise and God hadn't. He just responded. God just speaking to him right now. Abraham hadn't done nothing yet. Now the Lord said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country. I want you to leave where you're living at, your country where you're born, from your kindred, that's your kinfolk, and I will, and, and, and from your father's house, your kinfolk, you run there with dad and them and all your cousin and them and everything, get away from them, leave the country, unto a land I what? We'll show you, he ain't told them where it was yet. He said, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of her reign. What the Bible says Abraham did, he just obeyed God. Because see, when God want to get do something big through you, he got to separate you from everybody first. He said, all the nations of the earth. Did you catch that? I'm going to use you to bless all the nations of the earth. We'll be blessed because of you. Hmm? Amen. First, I got to make your name great. Right. And then I'm going to bless you. That's why I tell you, you got to fight people that fight you. Everybody that bless you. If you got the seed of Abraham, now what gives up the seed of Abraham? Anybody operating in faith today is the offspring of Abraham. Anybody, because he's the one that originated. Because all the nations of the earth shall. So if you operate my faith today, anybody that bless you gonna be blessed. Anybody that curse you gonna be cursed. That's the God words does not return to him void. If God said it, it gotta be so. If he done it for he said, I have no respect to person. What he done for Abraham, he got to do for me if I walk in the same principles. That's why I don't fight my enemies. Anybody messing with you, don't worry, God gonna get him in due time. You just keep walking in faith. He going to get them. It's right there. He said, I'll bless them if they bless you. Now, if they be good to you, I'm going to bless them. And if they curse you, I'm going to curse them. That's why you can't pray for everybody. Hmm? Can't pray for everybody. You let the Spirit tell you when to pray and when not to pray. And I'm going to tell something with you. Let me share something with you. Each time as believers that we obey God, he's going to ask us to do something more harder and harder and harder. The next test is going to be a little bit more tougher. He's not going to tempt you, but he's going to test you. Because I'm getting ready to give you a, a big blessing, but he's going to test you. First, God asked Abraham, I just want to see, can you leave your family? 
and go where I'm going to show you. See, because most people, they hooked on their family. And that's, they don't get past the family. Because the family means more than God. Huh? I'm not making this up. You see it right there. And if we can get past the family, then God might can do something through it. But most people get stuck. That would stop half the people right there. What? Leave my dad? Daddy, who gonna take care of daddy? Somebody gonna take care of no work? God won't ask you to do nothing for him and then punish your daddy in the process. That's not God. See, you worry about it too much. You too focused on the family, see? And that's what people problem is today. For they work, they families, they God. He said, hey, Ram, leave your father house, all your kindred, and go to the land. I will show you. They're gonna be blessed for what you finna do. And we get past the family. And each time you obey God, He's gonna ask you to do something that requires more faith. If you if you find that your faith is diminishing and that your assignment is getting smaller, it's because you ain't doing nothing. Pay attention. If your assignment is getting smaller, it's because you ain't doing nothing. He told me, we will preach your first sermon. Preach, preach, preach. I preached that night. A man got saved. Then he said, we will build a church. What did me to hold on now? He going to ask you to do hard stuff. Hard stuff that people know that you couldn't have done without God. Either one. He going to still get the glory. That's why I tell y'all, you need to free yourself and let God start using right where you are. He wanna, he wanna silence some people. And then he wanna bring some people in too because of you. Each time you obey God, he's gonna ask you to do more and more and more. I'm getting ready to close. He told Abraham to leave his father's house and go to a land I will show you. The next thing God asks Abraham to do. Go to Genesis chapter 13, one chapter over, then we're going to close. This is just the introduction. He told Abraham to leave his father's house and leave his country and go to the land I will show you. Now go to Genesis chapter 13, the next chapter, and look at verse 17 and 18. See, Abraham, see, I like, I like, I love God and I love Jesus. Because God is a rewarder. When you obey him, he rewards you. The next thing God asks Abraham to do is walk through the land. He said, walk through the land because I'm going to give it to you. Ain't that something? Yeah. Go down to the Nissan dealer. Go down to the Chevrolet dealer. Go down to the Ford dealer because you're going to test drive. And whatever you test drive, I'm going to give it to you. That's what he's telling them. Yeah. Go on, walk through. Now, what did Abraham say? Well, I done did all that walking. I just got here. You asked me to leave my country. Now I'm over. You want to do some more walking? That's why I left my next point. A lot of people can't get blessed because they're full of excuses and they're complaining too much. Now, you didn't ask me to leave one country. I walked over here to this country. Now, you want me to walk some more? He said, everything you walk through this land, you whatever you walk, I'm going to give it to you, Abraham. Walk through there and feel your new home. You know how we do when we buy a new house. Before, they, before you close, you want to do a walk through. Check out the Knicks and the Knacks. Make sure they got everything like I asked them to get. Genesis 13, look at verse 17. When you finally say, bless his name. Look what he said. He says to Abraham, now he didn't ask him to leave everything. Now he done must have made it there. Look at Abraham. He says, arise, walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it, for I will give it to thee. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron. And built there an altar unto the Lord. He done made it to the place. God said, now go on, check out your new place. Walk in it. Walk all the land. Walk all this year. As far as you can walk in. As far as your eyes can see this yours. I'm going to give it to you. You ain't got to steal. You ain't got to take me. God said, I'll give it to you. Huh? Because Abraham had what? Childlike faith. When God asked him to do something, he done it. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. And that's what we want to get. That's the point we want to get to. We're not.